All right. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to use an error diagram to solve an equation and inequality. Specifically, in this case, we're going to look at an absolute value in the problem. In order to do that, along the way, we're going to need an inverse operation for absolute value. Now, we know that absolute value doesn't pass the horizontal line test, uh, but for the sake of what we're doing in this problem, we can, on the arrow back, coming from where we have the absolute value here in the first place, if we want to reverse the absolute value, all we need to do is create a positive and negative version of that much as we would in reversing a squaring function with a plus or minus square root. So let's go ahead and build the error diagram for the function that we've got here. So as always, we start with the x. First thing that happens to that x is we subtract 6. It gets put into the absolute value. We multiply by negative 3 and then add 13. And now what happens here is after all of that transformation of the x over here, we're supposed to end up at the end with a 4. So we need to work the 4 that we have here all the way back to the x over on this side. So we need to create inverse arrows as we come back. The inverse of adding 13 is subtracting 13. The inverse of multiplying by negative 3 is dividing by negative 3 or multiplying by negative 1 third. We wanted to do that. This now is where we're, going, where we're going to employ our inverse of the absolute value and make that a plus or minus. Um, and then finally, we will add 6 in this last part. So now if we just start with the 4 that we had here in the first place, we're going to be a little careful with our notation here. 4 and the first thing it just says to do is to subtract 13 and that gives us a negative 9. I'm not going to put an equal sign here because I'm going to continue doing things to this and it won't be equal all the way across. Our next thing is to divide by negative 3 and that gives us a 3. I then generate a plus or minus 3 and then I'm going to add 6 onto my plus or minus 3. That gets me back to the x and tells me that x is either 6 plus 3, which is 9, or x is equal to 6 minus 3, which is 3. And those are the two solutions to this equation. All right. So let's extend that idea now to an inequality. We start out exactly the same way. We're going to graph the equality first to find boundary points, and then we'll test our various boundary points to see where the solution should be. So uh, again, we start with the x. First thing that happens is we add 4, and then we put that inside of an absolute value, multiply by 2 and subtract 7. That is supposed to get us to a 5. We build the arrows back the other direction, adding 7, multiplying by a half, plus or minus, and subtracting 4. So our boundary points, beginning again with the 5, we do 5 and add 7 and get a 12. Half of the 12 is a 6, so we have a plus or minus 6, which we'll subtract 4 from, and that gets us all the way back to x. So x is either 6 minus 4, which is 2, or x is equal to negative 6 minus 4, which is negative 10. Okay, what I like to do then at that point is draw a number line. And we're going to mark the important points on the number line, which are 2 and negative 10. 
So I've got a negative 10 back here. And I had a positive 2 up here. And I left those as open circles because in our original problem, which we'll bring down here so we can get a closer look at, in our original problem, that was a less than and not a less than or equal to. So the absence of the equal to right there means I'm going to leave these circles open. They form boundaries, but they are not themselves solutions. And then I'm going to pick test points in various locations into the sections that the x-axis has been broken into. So, for example, on the red arrow here, I've got a number to the left of negative 10. That could be a number like negative 12. And so if I started a negative 12 in my arrow diagram here, just to see where it goes, negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. The absolute value of that is 8 times 2 is 16. 16 minus 7 is 9. And 9 is bigger than 5, which is what we're looking for. So this is a good value. And graphing is about covering up the good values. So everything over here will also be a good value. Um, I'm going to go ahead and test the green point as well. Let me uh, get some of this out of my way here a little bit. So when I test my green point, if uh, zero is in between there, so zero is a good place to choose. 0 plus 4 is 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 7 is 1, which is not greater than 5. So this is a, uh, for lack of a better term, that is a bad point. It does not create a solution. So nothing in between the negative 10 and the 2 will be a solution. And a point to the right of 2, like 3, I could use that. That gives me a 7, and a 7, and a 14, and a 7, which is larger than 5 on the blue point. So this one is good, which means that point and all its friends to the right of 2 are also good solutions. And this is the graph of the solution to my inequality.